I'm Terry Leesgang, owner of the St. John Railroad. We've been in business now for almost six years, started in 2001. We have a narrow gauge live steam railroad and uh, electric battery operated railroad. We are modeling a 1900 to 1930 era mining railroad with connections to the Rio Grande Southern and the Denver and Rio Grande. We're kind of a branch line off of those two. We handle ore and we take the ore from the uh, mines and ship it directly to the smelters on the Rio Grande Southern or on the De Denver and Rio Grande. I have uh, AccuCraft Live Steam, uh, two cylinder Shea, a C16 electric, a Bachman Connie that's been converted to RC, a LGB that's converted to an 060 120th switcher, and a number of uh, AccuCraft cars. In addition, I have built a number of Phil's narrow gauge uh, kits, three or four box cars, a couple of uh, flat cars, and a two reefers. In addition, I have uh, Don Winter's passenger cars, which uh, include the coach, a combine, a baggage car, and an RPO car. That's our highball express uh, passenger service. That's about it. I have about 350 feet of track on the, on the layout and we're strictly live steam and RC only. The yard had to be regraded because it wasn't, the water wasn't draining correctly. So everything that was left over from the regrade was used on the layout, which ended up to be about 300 yards of dirt. So we started moving the dirt around and then I brought in rock and I got ideas off of the internet, some other people's layouts. And between all those ideas, I decided to do this one. And then uh, just kind of evolved. The original layout was just on the outside. And every year I add a, a little bit more until now where it's about as big as it's going to get because there's no room to expand at all. Yes, I'm looking forward to having all the people come by and uh, take a look at my layout. I have a unique layout for Arizona in that it's a mountain layout and it's designed so that you cannot watch the train go completely around. The train leaves your view quite often. You don't know where it's gonna come back out. And it makes it run a lot long, the runs a lot longer when you do that. Thank you.
Hi, I'm Bruce Lynn. Uh, welcome to Tucson. This is Tortolina Mountain Railway. It's been in, uh, around for about four years, a continuous effort as most of them are. Uh, about 300 feet, 100, 350 feet of track. Uh, it's been about four years uh, in the making and always continuous, you know, always continual project. Um, what else? Uh, started as a, a, a major, um, uh, single loop around the tree on top of an existing flower bed and it's sort of grown from there to a double double uh, double loop mainline kind of railway so for continuous operation well i was going to put it in the backyard but my it, there's always been one of my kids pets back there so it's something i've been wanting to do for about 15 years and i finally finished the front yard to you know landscaped it and was able to make room for the railway railway and it's coming right along you know, I had an HO set, and I could never, uh, it, was, it was not very successful. Back when I was a teenager, I had HO, and I couldn't get it to go around the, go around the circle one time. So to give it a hand at a different, different scale, and this is, I can almost get one loop at a time. Well, I grew up in the 50s, so you'll see things uh, from the 50s. Everything here is scratch built. Uh, I didn't really, uh, didn't really start out that way. It just kind of turned into... Uh, I actually liked building the buildings and doing some interiors of the buildings and kind of uh, that was that's been the, the more almost as much fun as the railroading. So everything is here is, is made out of redwood and uh, the bridges and so on. Well, we have a pretty good population of pack rats. I know people all around the around the United States have different problems. Pack rats are probably the biggest problem here. So I chase them out every once in a while and they. I'll notice some little piece missing and have to go have to go find it and I'll find it underneath the train station or stuff. They also bring in cactus and fill everything up in two wires. Luckily I've found finally found wires that they don't really like apparently. So uh, some of that but through luck and th some of it through uh, trial and error. Um, um, pretty much just me. My wife helps a little bit. She's, she's actually more talented than I am but um, I, she, she gives me her critical eye <laughs> most of the time. Uh, and she helps a little bit, not, just not, it's not really her interest though. So yes, we've had uh, through the club and this uh, layout's been in the Rails in the Garden tour, which is a, a tour uh, like an open house around town of eight railroads. And this one's been in it twice, last year and the year before. Uh, and it's do like doubled in size in between them. So it's, uh, it's, it's been pretty well received. Everybody kind of likes it.
Good morning. My name is Gary Martin and this is my wife Peggy. Uh, you are about to see or be introduced to the Eagle Mountain Railroad. The railroad is named after the street we live, live on. Mexican name is Sierra de Aguila, a mountain of eagles. The uh, operation, we started building this about 15 years ago and like many people it started with a small railroad around a Christmas tree and after it had expanded halfway around our house we decided we probably should take it outdoors. So we started with a small track around the uh, outside of one of our trees and at that time I worked in Mexico so I could only come home and work on the weekends so it grew slowly over a period of about six years. It then expanded into about 500 feet and from that point it, after I retired it grew into about 1400 plus feet and it just appears to keep, keep growing. When we originally started the outside railroad, we, we thought about it for several years, and then we decided what we would try to do was go ahead and make a railroad that's both educational and artistic, and make the theme of the railroad loosely based on items or things that happen in, in Arizona. So as you walk around the railroad, you will see towns that represent different parts of Arizona, ghost towns, uh, towns, Mexican towns of old New Gallus, you will see uh, many mountains that come from different parts of Arizona. So, but like I say, basically and very loosely, it is themed around items that uh, do occur here in Arizona. Uh, we have, uh, like I said before, around 1,400 uh, feet plus track. I run about uh, eight engines at a time. I have 22 engines uh, that, I, that I actually have. Most of those engines have been uh, highly uh, painted, uh, weathered out, so I don't like to run things that look new. So we do a lot of weathering. Most of the uh, buildings that I have are both uh, scratch built and kit bashed. Nothing you see on the railroad is actually the same as the kit originally arrived, if I, if I actually use a kit. You can see as you come around, you will be going into a, you, you do have area of raised track. There's about 250 feet of raised track that I use and that's mainly so that friends that come over that want to operate on the track can easily back their trucks up and uh, unload their materials, their cars or trucks, unload their materials, put it on the track and then we can run. I run both power and I run battery both. I found that for different occasions it's wise to have uh, track power especially when you're running eight to ten hours a day for shows but at the same time when you operate and in some of the areas where I don't want to run wiring I do run I do run battery and certainly most of the club members who come like to run a lot of their uh, a lot of their battery materials just basically uh, again it's the Eagle Mountain Railroad its size roughly is 30 by 150 feet one way and then 30 by 150 feet in the opposite direction are a total of 7,500 square feet. The scales run all the way from 124 to 120.3. I certainly uh, don't, am not a rivet counter. I don't believe anybody that truly runs on outdoor garden railroads can be rivet counters. I can always find something that isn't prototypical, so why worry too much about that? Uh, the theme is uh, certainly three-foot narrow gauge Arizona mountains and desert. I run all steam, basically the 19th, uh, late 19th century up to the 19, about the 1950s. My newest addition is Route 66 and that's into the 50s. Most of the railroads based around the 1930 era. Uh, the age of the railroad has been working on it approximately 15, somewhere around 15 years. I run both the uh, motive power and electric uh, battery power. The uh, maximum grade that I have is about six six percent maximum, but most of it runs around two to two and a half uh, percent. The maximum or the minimum radius I have is 18 inches. You'll see that on some of the shots in the mining areas, and uh, especially down in the copper mine, you'll see some very very uh, tight radius turns, and only those turns can only be made by the way with a with a Bachman Shea. The re I've never found anything else that will make that type of turn. Um, I run, um, as far as the uh, track itself, I run both LGB and Aristocraft code 332. The structures are Pico, Pola, Railroad Avenue, and uh, Scratch Build. And there's some other suppliers that I haven't named that are in there that have done a very good job. Control systems for the track power, believe it or not, are Bridgeworks, 
MRC Aristocraft, LGB, and Hoggers. Uh, power supply control is Aristocraft train engineer for my track power and Airwire 900 for my battery power. We have learned a long time ago that because we're out in the desert and we do not have a lot of fencing that we have had to plant our trees and shrubs to accommodate what we'll say is critters. Our critters are not only rabbits, but we actually have bobcats, javelinas, mountain lions, and assorted snakes, uh, including rattlers. So uh, we don't want to put fences in, so we do try to plant trees that will accommodate that type of, uh, that type of desert operation. The, uh, there are many shrubs, ground covers, I won't name them all. Uh, we have uh, cactus of all different types and shrubs of all different types. As you, uh, as you walk around our railroad uh, or visit it by, via the DVD, you'll see a large mountain range at the back of the, uh, back of the layout. Uh, to tell you the truth, my hero in this gauge is really uh, Mr. Treat out of San Diego. So I kind of picked up some mountain ideas from him, but in getting here, I truly believed I could not do exactly the same thing he did. So I decided sometime back to figure out a way to very quickly and easily build my own mountain range. So these are, they're done a special way, but they, they do represent different areas of Arizona. Some of it, the uh, spider rocks out of what we call Canyon de Chez. The flat tops are Monument Valley, a Monument Valley area. And then as you go on down, you run into what we call the Superstition Mountains in Arizona, where uh, the Lost Dutchman Gold Mine will be found. If you look carefully, you will see that as you walk the railroad. Um, also behind the mountains is the old town of um, Nogales, Mexico, which is about 90 miles from, where, from Tucson, where we currently live. So, but I've tried to represent old Tucson and you will see the cattle drives being driven through the town. Uh, you will also see the, the Mexicans sleeping uh, by the, on the streets and type of thing that, that occurred in those days, taking their siesta time. Then as you go up the mountains in the back, you will also run into an Anasazi village where the Anasazis who disappeared some 2,000 years ago, however, they were very prominent in Arizona for quite a few years. So I've kind of represented the, the, Anasazi, uh, the Anasazi way of life. Uh, yeah, those of you that do sign up for the 2008 convention, not only will you be seeing my railroad, but you'll also be seeing some almost close to, I think it's 48 different railroads between here and Chandler, between Tucson and Chandler, Arizona. Uh, they're beautiful railroads, all of them, and they're all different in their own right. Uh, I would say this will be one of the finest conventions, in my opinion, will be one of the finest conventions held, mainly, mainly because of the diversity of the railroads and in an area that you very seldom get to go to a convention of this type. The desert's not generally known for putting on this type of convention. I think that anybody that comes to it will deeply, deeply enjoy uh, the convention. So please, please join us for the 2008 uh, National Garden Railway Convention in Chandler, Arizona.